Welcome to this rebroadcast of a Sophia Symporium that was originally published back in March of 2016. This is a great show on pendulum dowsing. Um, some people know it as witching, you know, um, looking for geographical imbalances or finding key ley lines and such. There's a lot to hear in this show. We have the letters to Robin information, and also Walt Woods himself here to uh, share his knowledge, and there's just so much more. So I'm gonna go ahead and share a screen. We're gonna jump right into this. I hope you enjoy. Oh, yeah, today, January 14th, 2017. And welcome to our first show of the spring season here on Sophia's Emporium, brought to you by Free and Independent Media mm. via the Conscious Consumers Network on the World Wide Web. My bad. Through electrical currents and high crystalline technology, the doors of the ancient mystery schools have been opened once again on physical earth as we participate awake and aware in this quest for gnosis, which is commonly known as knowledge, we will master the art of asking the big questions properly. My name is Suze, and today, once again, the words of Rudolf Steiner, they were spoken in 1912, live within me and need to be voiced. It's my hope that the selected passages found in this book right here, Initiation, Eternity, and the Passing Moment, will serve as a bridge that connects the concept known as spiritual science to the evidence that your natural dousing abilities and knowing yourself go hand in hand. Furthermore, we will begin to answer the question, what is the difference or definition of soul and spirit? So, without further ado, I'd like to welcome back my dear friend, and companion on this path, Mr. Vic. Welcome. Good to, be. Good to see you. It's always a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, I'm glad you made it on time today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can appreciate that. It's always a good thing to be on time. Well, you know what? I don't even worry about it anymore. I really don't. So it was just fine. But um, before we begin, to uh, elaborate on your question of soul and spirit. I want to expand on the question a bit. So, where can I, or the individual, find in the most intimate life of my own soul what is resounding through the wide spaces of the macrocosm? Well, it's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> you know, lot. right. Steiner is always a mouthful. Mm -hmm. But his words resonate, and they're clear as a bell to me. So I thought that his words were perfect for today's show. And, and you'll know when I when it's my words, too. But... Yeah, we have a lot of uh, wisdom here today. Now, something that I was thinking about is like, um, you know, we're all like these little itty bitty individual grains of sand. Mm -hmm. So you figure in this room right now, there's three little itty bitty grains of sand, our producer and us. Right. Anybody else that's listening, right? But it's like we're on this collective beach 
of these unique individuals who wish to work independently. And nothing gives truer joy than to find someone else who is independent, shoulder to shoulder, he says, giving out and sharing according to his own ability once he has recognized that it fits into the whole. Well, wow, you know, it's just that when you start to talk about something like soul and what that means, I was just going to pull up a uh, graphic here for you that I found from the Wingmaker's philosophy. Beautiful. And uh, I did go to uh, present that to you. Unfortunately, it didn't work the way I had hoped, but you should be able to see it on your computer screen. I can, Vic. Okay, so if you, if you look at that particular graphic where the entity is on the left part yes and the human instrument on the right yes and now the the entity is the part of ourselves that is at best uh, what i would say the most close to what i consider to be soul okay so as he says here a model of consciousness encompassing the individuated spirit sometimes referred to as the higher self or soul. Now, a lot of folks uh, in their philosophical pursuits uh, generally don't get that far, uh, in my experience. Most, most teachings basically take you to the lower astral, at best to the uh, mental plane. Yes. And, and in, in the mental plane, it's so gigantic and so huge that there, there's so many aspects to it that you literally get lost there. And that's where the trap is for most of us, I think, that we just, we come into the mental reality and it becomes so real, the illusion is so real, we don't think there's anything beyond that. So we wind up spending incarnation after incarnation there. Now, the entity itself, however, is outside of that. The issue is, how can I connect the, the mental apparatus, the part of me that's mine, uh, with that part of me, which is soul, which is the real me. That's because without that part, you can never have the experience of the mental uh, faculties and things that you have. So, so as what James tries to point out here uh, is that the energy of soul is a very fine uh, vibration that is equal to source intelligence, which means it is in the state of all knowingness. It's, it, it is pure being. And because of that, it is really outside time and space. And if you look uh, on the chart, you could see over on, I think it was on the right side, yeah, where it says interacts and on the far right, it says human instrument. You go down and it says it interacts in time, space, energy, and matter. That's where we are right now, interacting with each other. Correct. We need to get through these layers to the point where we actually become the entity. And at that point, you become completely liberated because what he's saying is that you connect to all of your existences. I don't know if that's a word, but you connect to all these things that you have been and will be. And that's the true, in my opinion, the true meaning of the sovereign integral state of consciousness or source intelligence. And so that's how I see, uh, how I see a soul as the entity at a level that's far beyond the mind. And you can't really even talk about it because it can only be experienced directly as direct perception. See? Bingo. And, you know, before you joined us, um, Biggie and I were discussing to say how some people, they know what's going on, but they can't act on it because whatever it is freezes that person. And so maybe that's exactly what happens to people when they get into a chart like this and um, they experience whatever feeling arises within them 
And surely something like the Bach flower essence is perfect when one is working with these deep subjects. Um, let's bring up Steiner and marry that into this. And of course, what you did and illustrated just now is exactly what he means by these words. So, everyone who takes spiritual life in a sincere and earnest way chooses to oblige a sacred and serious commitment to uphold precisely this kind of attitude into the life of the soul. So, that the question may not only be, what is the way to the light of the spirit? Where can it be found? But rather, and above all, how must man tread the path of the soul that is able to lead him to the spirit light in the right way? Well, uh, where I have a little bit of a disconnect is you can't really look at soul or the entity as a body that's separate. It's, it's part of source. It's part of all things. Now, Mr. Vick, mm -hmm. keep in mind, mm -hmm. these words are 105 years old. So surely there are certain transitions that hadn't taken place. And as we move into this next thing, I think if what you're telling me is that he was he was talking to the consciousness of that time. Yes. I see what you're saying. Okay. Well, because he had a group of people that came to listen to him lecture. All of his books mm -hmm. are structured into lectures. Mm -hmm. Right. So one of the things that we're going to try to work with today, and, and, and we always do, is to be able to open up our awareness, to create a picture, to see how people learned their experiences through the different epochs of time. Because since there really is no time, and let's not, let's not do that thing right now, we both agree on that. Of course, we needed what we call time to give us a wide range of experience and language. And that flows back into group souls. So um, depending, of course, what culture or, say, great dynasties down through time, they all have this different language that one of the things that the wars have been fought over. So I, I try to not get hung up there. I try to imagine myself as this traveler through time and space. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, when you really start to get into the, uh, the, deeper, the deeper understandings of, of what that really means is that you really don't go anywhere. You're always, you're constantly in a state of existence. In exactly. A state of being. So what exactly. you're seeing around you is a maya, is what, what some teachings refer to as maya or illusion. Land of illusion. Exactly. So from my perspective, you know, what you go through in your reality, in your life, uh, is what you basically manifested for yourself because that's what, the entity, in your case, wants to have that experience for whatever purposes. I can't really, and even in my case, I can't really tell you what me as an entity, as a soul, for lack of a better term, well, uh, am out to really accomplish. All I can say is that through the, through the wholeness navigator, as James puts it, uh, through the spirit uh, guiding me and showing me the, the direction to take me, but sometimes you have to take 10 steps forward and 20 back and, you know, you go all that route. But, but for the most part is allowing, it's surrendering to the part of yourself that is in touch with spirit or the wholeness navigator so that you can then 
be led in the direction that you need to go. Otherwise, otherwise what happens is you start to get depressed and frustrated and stuff like that. And it's because you're just simply not fulfilling what your higher self wants you to have or the experiences that wants Yeah, 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 yeah. But see, nobody feels like they're worthy of that, Vic. Well, it's not a question of worthy. It's a question of being aware of it. Oh, well, then just hang on, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Because I haven't even showed you the information that I came up with a few days ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I got to tell you about it. I was drawn. My apologies for the telephone. Excuse me. Oh, that's all right. Um, I was drawn to a YouTube called Scientific Path to Heaven mm -hmm. on a channel by the name of World Energy. W-H-I-R-L-E-D, mm -hmm. energy. And the notes I jotted down that I'm getting ready to turn you on to to see if we can get it involved in the wholeness navigator here is from Maurice Cotterell's book that's entitled Future Science, Forbidden Science of the 21st Century. Hmm. Talk about kind of scary so the math and the calculations that this dude was doing was way over my head but there were certain key points that resonated with my heart brain so you know what you and i are doing with this um telekinesis and this heart brain interaction and stuff like to me as these things come up there is always a blessing in it. I mean, even if we just find one little thing on the search and try to create a bigger spectrum that people can work with. So this is what I got in my notes, okay? We're talking about spirit first, all right? Mm-hmm. And he gives the example that um, God is voltage in disguise and spirit is in the rocks, like in water and nature. Mm -hmm. And lakes and rocks have atomic energy, mm -hmm. but no soul. Now, like I said, this guy is way more mathematical and over my head that there were things that I thought maybe that were would be good today. Um, he also brings up that spirit is electromagnetic energy mm -hmm. and that it's atomic energy and that there's 120 different types of atoms. Okay. Now, there's this stuff in the middle and to me, it's like a bridge. So I put it in a different color marker. And it says everything is made of stardust and the body is the playground of God. So let's say that you say that God is spirit and God is a million volts. You know, and now he starts his math stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, When God gives a piece of himself to experience through us, that costs him like 200,000 volts. We're talking about the idea that God wants to always grow and expand in consciousness. So, depending on what the people do, there's where the math equation comes in and I would flunk the class. But these were just things I was bringing. So, now we're going to talk about the soul. And that's really more where our focus is at this time. But imagine as a baby when you enter 
this experience that you have a half of a volt. Soul examines the circumstances. Um, this half volt is a literal voltage. It's not metaphysical, unlike we know through heart math and the different groups they can measure our electromagnetic fields. Um, high voltage souls have halos around their heads, and we know that it's an aura. Uh, voltage can no longer be held when the body is chronically sick. So back to that math formula, that's why, say, the example of the matrix being here and the idea that they have trapped us where we can really get past the 3D and the 4D. And out there, back into all of our multidimensional forms and have a light body and different things like that. But the thing about the bodies too, and I thought this was wild. So I know about the emotional body and that's the heart. And the intellectual body would be considered to be the brain, but you and I know the heart is the brain. So I believe they're talking about the brain that would be the computer that would encapsulate this. And so they had an equation with that of one plus one and two plus two. So I took that to mean if the individual works through their process and is always seeking to know themselves and to acquire this knowledge that God benefits and, and, and gets voltage back is what I took that to mean. In the physical body, of course, they're talking about the cells, and they say that that's an even exchange. And then the spiritual is the soul inside out. But of course, we have a monad of the divine, so we must be a little grain of spirit and mostly soul. I mean, is, is that what we're led to believe? What do you think, Vic? Well, uh, I have to go back to uh, my old path again and just say that, and I like the definition, which is that soul could be the size of a universe or the size of an atom. You know, that's the difference in, in what the soul can be in terms of potentiality. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the, uh, you know, how that manifests itself in this reality, in our physical reality, is that in my opinion, now this is me, uh, soul can enter in any, into any real piece of living matter that it chooses depending on the experience. So, you know, the idea becomes that we are part of the totality, let's call it God, the ocean of love and mercy, and that we become an individuated drop of that ocean. And then it gets, we enter the lower worlds in order for us to gain all the experiences that we need in order to continue to evolve and become something more. As I see it, God just basically, you know, there was an old song, remember the one that goes, one is the loneliest number that you'll ever do. Remember that? Sure. And that, I think, really says what the reason, in my opinion, why God split itself up into endless numbers of entities, which are all part of this ocean. But it's because it wants to experience itself. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So as it continues to experience itself, and this is where it gets into the, uh, how should I put it? It gets into the area of, uh, uh, you know, when you have something that contradicts itself, uh, you, you wind up, uh, it, it's evolving in a sense, but at the same time, it's not because it's already complete. 
So it's it's a fascinating thing as far as the the thing with respect to the voltage. I, I think that there's probably some truth to that in the area of the uh, physical reality, the physical universe. Uh, we know, for example, uh, based on the experiments we've had with the super hedron colliders and all that stuff, that uh, that everything is light. It just flows as light out from somewhere. But as soon as we put our attention on it, it converts into a particle. Right. So, so as, as we put our attention on anything, in order for it to manifest, it has to become material, and therefore it becomes a particle. And then, of course, trillions of particles become whatever it is we're going to look at, whether it be uh, you know, an inanimate object or anything else. And uh, actually, someone took a photograph of that process, which was fascinating. It came up on the internet here about several or eight months ago. And, uh, and you could see how the shift in the light uh, created the particles. So, uh, you know, th that's a fascinating area of, uh, of exploration. I, I have heard other folks talk about, you know, the measurement of the voltages and all that and what it represents. And it's quite fascinating. I don't, you know, I don't pretend to really understand it. But I will say that it makes a lot of sense in light of uh, what we understand as the quantum realities. I think it's relevant because, say, like with the subject of dowsing. Now, this is something that, of course, they used all down through time. And... It is scientific, and it does work on voltage and energy. So yes. if, um, okay, if people, could grasp, and, and it always has to come through imagination first, then intuition, and then it moves out into inspired ideas. Mm -hmm. But if people knew how much they could empower themselves, then maybe they wouldn't feel like they're so screwed, like what we were talking about earlier. Unless, of course, what they want to experience is being screwed. Now, wait a second here. No, I'm just saying, you, if, if you're creating your reality, I mean, we can get into karma and all that stuff, but if you're creating your reality, and we would, I think, agree to that, right? That, oh, absolutely. That, that this, this thing turns into a particle, the particle turns into matter, blah, 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 blah. But, the if, you wanna get, but if you want to go through the getting screwed phase, then that's okay, too. But that's why we got to do and practice and live and be the six heart virtues is what I'm saying. So that's your experience. Everybody. <laughs> that's not everyone's experience. You know what I mean? I mean, look at, look at all the, the crap that goes on around the world. I mean, you ask yourself, well, geez, you know, why is there such a thing as these Israelis bombing these people out of existence in the Gaza Strip? And you have to ask yourself, why? You know, why would God allow that? And the best answer I heard to that was from a guy by the name of Bashar, who's a, you know, you've probably heard of him. And Bashar said, imagine a soul, imagine a spirit that is so compassionate, so loving, that it would enter into this world to become an example of what it's like to be destroyed like that. You know, it, it, and, and it's true. We learn from each other, you know, and we see this and you see this horrendous stuff. But at the, at the level of soul, it's just another experience. You know, it's just one more thing. It's all part of it. You, you know, you go through that experience, you come back and do something else and you keep going. But we're constantly creating our reality. I absolutely agree. And in Sue's world here... <laughs> That's the world I'm interested in right now. Oh, right. <laughs> I mean, like, all these synchronicities are so profound 
that are happening every day. And I think the beautiful thing about what we're doing is that uh, really, okay, I have no emotional investment in this whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> what I do have interest in is how people I and mean, groups come together at specific times yes. to accomplish specific goals. Yes. And so back in the day, part of Steiner's story was that it was obvious to them that they were screwed and that there was no hope and that all the shit was hitting the fan with the war and every other thing. And Steiner said to his friends, don't be sad that we didn't accomplish all of our goals. Mm -hmm. We seeded the astral world. And so, of course, now, springtime, everything's blooming. Mm -hmm. He knew that they would come back together again in this time mm -hmm. to complete that work. Okay. So, the way this sits with me is that collectively what we are all doing is basically studying spiritual science and over different eras it surely wasn't possible so what's scarier all of a sudden realizing that you've experienced every major catastrophe that's ever happened mm -hmm. or that what is happening now has never happened before and that there is a potentiality in that so how can you be sure that it's never happened before how do you know that i'm not trying to be difficult all these great People, just like wing makers, they knew that. There's a specific mm -hmm. window of time. Mm -hmm. um, you look at the Bible, specific mm -hmm. window of time. Mm -hmm. You look at the planetary alignments or the solstices, mm -hmm. specific windows of time. Absolutely, but you're looking at it from the perspective of the human instrument, which is limited and only looking at things in a linear capacity, in a linear fashion. So you're looking at it from a temporal perspective. Whereas uh, another way to look at it would okay. be from an eternal perspective, which you then see that all things that have happened, all things that are happening, and all things that will happen all exist in the present moment. It depends on what experience it is you want out of that. That's right. You see what I'm saying? I do. I do. And I didn't want to bring this up, but on this piece of paper, I didn't even write it down because I didn't have the balls to say it. But... Um, <laughs> The whole idea of, of what you just brought up. Mm -hmm. It really depends on what it is that you want out of this reality and this illusion, if you will. If you want to experience what you're talking about, perfect, you can do that. You want to completely believe in that 100%? Fine. You know, that's okay because it's already just part of your experience. It's what you're manifesting and what you're bringing into your reality in right. order for you to dis to evolve into whatever else. And like I said, sometimes you have to take a step back before you can take a step forward. But it doesn't matter because in the end, and I know that sounds like a, uh, a contradiction, a uh, paradox to the mind, but it isn't in reality because it just simply is what it is. And uh, for us to then say, well, this is good, this is bad, this is this, this is that, is really limiting it. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people look at God and don't call it God. They call it it. Because if they called it anything but it, would be to limit it. 
you're automatically limiting it, you know, as, as something finite. It's not finite. God is eternal. It's forever. It's all these, but your mind is simply unable to grasp it. So you can't call it. It's actually nothing more than anything. Sorry, I was getting a little worked up on that. <laughs> <laughs> you are an equal opportunity participant. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I think it's great. I was just trying to figure out how to roll into the subject without, um, because really, here's all I'm saying, Vic. Everybody says, know yourself, know yourself, know yourself. Now, we got people out there that are claiming to be blah, 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 right? You're not going to catch me doing that until there is proof. And I don't look like a goofball. So, I have to come at it from the human side. <laughs> because surely, um, the simple things that you and I talk about are enough to make some people run for the hills. Absolutely. Right, so I'm trying to stay low to the earth and stay grounded, Mr. Vic, what they call that. <laughs> You know, because I could just, woo, you know. Well, it depends on what it is you're trying to accomplish, and I can appreciate that, and I hope uh, I am not in any way uh, subverting your your intention. No, I'm I'm pretty obstinate, and um, I got a story to tell you, man. Okay. All right. So, last week after the show got done, I met a few more friends that are in the Mr. Vic category. So those are people that I've never met in real life. And we came into line through this computer. And uh, there's a very potent exchange going on. Mm -hmm. So there was a gal that called me, a real sweet lady. Her name is Lynn. And at first she couldn't remember how she found me. And then, of course, she remembered, but she's not on Facebook. So anyhow, she wanted to give me information that would help me here in Ferguson. So you know my ears perked up, right? Mm -hmm. But I was busy, and so I said, let me call you back, you know. And uh, when I called her back, what the whole subject was about was about dousing. And so... She was telling me how there's dousing techniques that I could do to protect my yard, my home, my body, mm -hmm. uh, to heal the water, to do a plethora of things. Okay. Okay. Then I had to jump in and say, girl, I know about that. And a few weeks ago, we actually started bridging the topic on the show, Sophia's Emporium. So... I want to tell you the story about that. Now, she is sharing this beautiful man with me, and his name is Raymond Grace. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, I said, you know, I'll bet you dollar down that he was one of the original 10 people that contributed to the work, Letters to Robin. Mm. And we had touched on that briefly on the other show. So here's what happened. It's 2004. I'm minding my own business working in the hair shop, right? Mm -hmm. And at the time, we were selling health food store stuff and had already made the transition into what I now call holistic hairdressing. And the guy come in. And he looks at me and he says, what are you doing here? And I'm like, you know, I do hair. And uh, we sell health food store products instead of the toxic chemicals in the beauty industry. And he goes, no, no, no. What are you really doing here? And I'm like, that's really what I do in here. And he says, well, I'm being told to give you something. And so he went out to the car and he brought back the letters to Robin and said that I would need it someday. So 
we're talking about a timeline between 2004 and 2016. So <clears throat> originally, the man that was the head of the Dowsers Association, his name was Walt Woods, and uh, he's no longer in the physical. Mm -hmm. And Raymond Grace, you're just going to love him. He's like the cutest cowboy you ever want to see. <laughs> but um, I was looking on the YouTube playlist, and I was like, look, Lynn, they are associated, and they are buddies, and confirmation of spirit on the phenomenon progress, right? Right. So we've got a couple of videos, and I really do hope that people find an interest in at least one of these categories because it's very incredible the science and the stability behind this art. So all I know is I imagine that back in the days of the um, ancient mystery schools here on earth mm -hmm. that dowsing was like recess in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right, groovy. So, um, I know what you mean about mystery schools. I actually helped start one. Uh, really? It's, yeah, it's called the, uh, it's still around. It's called the, uh, the Way of Truth. And uh, it's an interesting uh, mystery school in that uh, the individual that is running it, a gentleman by the name of Michael Owens, uh -huh. uh, is a prolific, well, he doesn't call it a channeling because he sees it that, you know, he, he goes to the direct area of soul con connections and he actually allows these other masters to talk with him and he writes up all these interesting things so i was uh i was with him for a while and uh yeah i, I understand uh, that's why when i read uh I, by the way i bought uh, three of the books from steiner i've downloaded them on my kindle and so i'll be uh, reviewing those uh going up forward but uh anyway uh it's all quite interesting stuff of course, when I got to Wingmakers, you know, it was to me like the, the best thing since sliced bread. And even that today, I'm starting to question. But uh, that's just how it is. You know, we just continue to grow and grow and grow and we outgrow everything and we just keep going. That's that's the lovely part of it. It's just knowing that, you know, there's no end to this. It's a never ending, uh, never ending uh, journey. That's why I love to call it a never ending story, Vic. Is that what you called it? I do. Yeah. When? Well, on YouTubes and when I'm storytelling, I talk about the never-ending story. Excellent. Well, I, I, I was being know. facetious, actually. I'm sorry. It's, oh. I was just... <laughs> hey, always remember, Vic. Uh-huh. I don't get jokes. Oh, okay. And then someday I'll have to tell you the only joke I ever got in the world because it's about... You should have stopped when you were ahead. <laughs> Look, we got to. I get that double entendre. Wait, <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. All right. Uh, we got to do the video, and and this is Raymond Grace's awesome video uh, called "Healing Water and Abuses." So let's roll it, Biggie. <laughs> Imagine a world where predictable results come reliably from thought, where healthcare works and corrections are therapeutic. Imagine a world that is safe, clean, and flourishing. In fact, don't imagine. In the next 20 minutes, we'll see how we can end abuse, clean up water, and reduce violence on the planet. No kidding. Here on Imagine. I'm your host, Bob Keaton. Raymond Grace, you'd still call yourself a dowser, wouldn't you? Well, dowsing is one of the things that I do. Um, 
I call my workshop self-empowerment. Doubting is simply a way to achieve. It's just one of the ways to achieve. You were talking about the workshop on body intelligence. Mm -hmm. There's something about us that brings memory forward, right? There's something about us that even something from a past life or ages ago might still be affected. Is it true? Well, I believe that's true, yes. This is the way that I started out doing something. It was still been 10 years ago last month. My buddy Jeff Jones and I uh, worked together uh, rather closely. We exchanged ideas with each other. One day, we were talking about water, which is water has been one of my major things in cleaning up water in the world. And by the way, Bob, uh, the last count, uh, that has been two years ago when you and I were at the housing conference, we had at that time reached 142 members uh, with, with our films and information. So, one of the second principle upon which my work is based is energy is impressed upon matter. Well, thoughts and actions are energy, and water is matter. And I got to thinking one day that all of the atrocities, the starvation, the wars, the butchering that people have done over the centuries has been impressed, at least to some degree, upon the water. So uh, the more I thought about that, the uh, more important it seemed to become. Because human beings have got a very poor track record of being kind to us. Uh, you, you can read the, the Bible and the most of the Old Testament. It's about war and butchering and people killing each other and enslaving each other and all this. So I thought, well, a lot of this suffering has been impressed upon what? Energy being impressed upon matter. Well, our bodies are made mostly of water. So I used my dowsing to check to see what was the effect of the negative energy in the water that was in my body. Dr. Emoto told me that an adult is 70% water, an infant is 90% water, and if you get below 50% water content, we simply die. Mm -hmm. So, so you're right about that. Yeah, we yeah. are a water. Well, uh, then I got to think how much of the water in my body has been impressed and affected by the actions of people a few centuries ago. And the only way I knew to come up with an answer was to, was to dial it. Because if we know how to ask questions, know how to dial it, we can find out most anything we want to know. Asking the right question is the key to it. So I simply asked, what's the effect of the negative memory of water that's in my body? And I got that it was mildly negative, it wasn't really severe, and it was, I think it would be different for different people. Well, Jeff and I got to think about this, so we decided, okay, we're going to remove the negative memory from the water from our body. Now, I will kind of just paraphrase how we did this, but what happened? Our bodies started going into detox. Now, we were not traveling together at the same time. We were uh, just staying in touch with phone. But one of the first things that happened was uh, we started sweating a lot, and especially at night. I would wake up at night and I would see I'd have long hair, and there would be a dry hair on my head. And that was unusual. And then uh, water just ran through us like a stream. You couldn't really make it from one rest area to another on the interstate. It's a good thing it had trees alongside the road. Uh, so then the next thing that happened was we got a terrible body odor. They did a shower about every two hours. The odor seemed to have, not have any effect at all on it. And then we got a case of pimples. Our plan was to remove the negative memory from the water in our body. And that's the way it came out. There's something called surface tension. Now, I'll give you the scientific definition of surface tension. It is the amount of pressure required to penetrate one centimeter of water. Now, I'll give you a hill with this definition. You've seen a leak put on a bucket of water. That's because the leak does not break the surface tension. But if you were to take a bottle of detergent and squirt some of it in the water under the leak, the leak would probably sink. Why? Because the detergent lowers the surface tension of water. So that's what we did. We lowered the surface tension of the water in our bodies 
in order to allow it to uh, to release all the negative memories. And this process went on for about two years. And according to the best dowsers in America that we can get to help us out on this, the surface tension of the water in our bodies dropped dramatically. I haven't been able to get any scientific evidence as to what is the lowest surface tension ever recorded in a human body. I was asked uh, about this, but I haven't got anybody to know. So the only information I can give on it is this what we got with our dials. What we do know is that our body went through uh, a physical cleansing. And we seem to feel quite a bit better. We actually wondered if our body uh, got low enough in surface tension, lower than the river or the lake, if we could walk on the water. So far, it hasn't worked. Every time I've stepped on water so far, I've went in. So maybe it's just there. Talking about water and the fact that we are mostly water, one word for Fukushima. <laughs> Okay, now I don't know a lot about that. Um, there's a lot of things going on out there in the world that we might or might not be able to do anything with. I don't like to say we can never do anything. I always think we can try. And I have worked on it. Now, what we have done, uh, well, as a matter of fact, I just did this this morning on the way up here. I have a new client up in Boston. And I said, how is your water? What kind of water do you have? You know, I, I buy bottled water. He said, this water here doesn't taste good. Well, city water, for the most part, is not very good quality. See, all water is not equal. Just because it's wet doesn't mean it's equal. And water has a spirit. But most water, especially commercial water, does not have the spirit of water. What I learned is that there is greed in the water, or it's being sold mostly for greed, then the spirit of the water won't be there. The spirit of water will not stay where greed is. I've pretty much con convinced myself of that in the last 10, 15 years I've been doing this. So uh, I talked to this girl for a few minutes and I said, uh, go to the kitchen and take a drink of water and tell me what you think. And she came back on the phone and said, this water tastes good. And that was the plan. So far, Bob, we've done this. Uh, I did it in Rome, Italy about two months ago. And now, please don't try to contact me to do this for you because there's more of you than there is of me. And uh, there just wouldn't be time to do it. So if you want to learn about this, what I'm giving Bob here in this interview today is cutting edge information that I have yet uh, not recorded or written anywhere. I might want to sometime in the future if I have time. Of something the world really needs to know. Uh, in order to do this, uh, really requires a focused mind. And that means, uh, if I can say this semi scientifically, being able to function at a deeper level of mind. And Bob, when I teach my normal self empowerment classes, that's the first thing I do is show folks how to think at a deep level of mind and add power to their thoughts. And I do this fairly thorough. It's a matter of concentration, but it's also a matter of brain frequency. And the power of thought lies in low brain frequencies. And if that's a little too complicated, call it a relaxed state of mind. And if that's too complicated, call it daydreaming. It's really that simple. The problem is most folks, they dream uh, uh, and worry about something they don't want to happen. It's called worry. But what they're really doing is feeding the problem rather than creating a solution. So the first rule of success is think of what you want, not what you don't want. Because see, there, there are, as you well know, there are an infinite number of probable futures. And whichever one has happened depends upon where we put our energy. So if we worry about something, we'll put our energy into what we don't want to happen. First principle is that all things, including your thoughts and emotions, are composed of energy. The intelligent human mind can direct energy. The second one I've already given, energy is impressed upon matter. That means you're affected by everywhere you've been and people you have associated with, even the thoughts of not only yourself, but the thoughts of other people. And the third one, principle I borrowed from Einstein, of energy follows thought. 
I was just thinking the, the big difference between you and many other people like myself, you don't see a limitation where I don't see a possibility. You don't believe you can't, and most people don't believe they can. I think you summed it up pretty good, Bob, because I haven't done many things with smarts. I've done most things because I didn't know they couldn't be done. Uh, now, you and I did interviews 10, maybe even 15 years yeah, ago, right. and this is the first time we've had an opportunity to get back together. So a lot of things have happened in advance. An awful lot of things. I don't think I've told you about uh, the well up in Saskatchewan. This would have been back in 02. I was traveling across Saskatchewan with one of my friends, and we were invited to spend the night at a place. And when I got there, I found out why they invited us. The man said he had a well that had a lot of arsenic in it, well above the accepted safe level attested by the uh, Canadian government. And he wanted to know if I could clean it up. And I said, well, I really don't know anything about arsenic. I, I, but, you know, I'll, I'm here. I'll do what I can. He said, now, we have a closed cap on this well. You can't energize any water and pour it in there. Well, that's okay. I'll, I'll do the best I can. I'll let me know what happens. In about two months, I get a very excited phone call from him. He's had the Canadian government test the water, and there's barely a trace of arsenic in it. Okay, what did you do? Uh, I'll give you the terminology I use. This is a terminology I just, I didn't actually make it up. I kind of borrowed it from uh, what I heard about TV. It's called scramble frequency. See, uh, I heard about scrambling uh, channels on uh, on TV. I don't know much about TV because I sell market, but I just heard folks talk about they were scrambling a channel so they couldn't watch it for, uh, for free anymore. They had to pay for it. Okay, I think, well, if they can do it, I can do it. I'll just apply it to something else besides TV. So everything has a frequency. Now, the definition of frequency is the speed at which an element vibrates. So I scrambled the frequency of arsenic and adjusted the frequency of water. That's like introducing chaos. I keep everything real simple, what I call barnyard logic. <laughs> if you uh, scramble a frequency of something, yeah, you are disrupting it. Right. And uh, I believe that we have the ability then to transform it into something beneficial. Now, I remember at the Dowsers Conference in Vermont, that there was a group that they asked you to help them with water there, and you said, no, I won't. Oh, and yeah. And we were shocked until you explained the rest of yeah, it. Yeah, uh, I was on, on an internet show with some folks out of Vancouver one night, it's been several years ago, and someone wrote in and said, come to Africa and clean up the water. I said, I'm not the one to ask you that. People have to learn to take responsibility for themselves. I said, I don't know that I have the ability to do that but I wouldn't do it if I could, because if I did, and you don't change anything, then you will have it messed up again by the end of the week. Now, I got an a email recently from India, clean up the Ganges. I said, I'll make a deal with you. Stop dumping dead bodies, raw sewage and chemicals in it, and we'll talk. Never heard any more from them. You see, if you keep on doing what you're doing, you're going to keep on getting what you get. And the biggest problem with water pollution is ignorance and lack of respect. And until those two problems are solved, people are going to be dealing with polluted water. And water is basically the essence of life. I mean, nothing lives without it. And that's when I started 30 years ago to work cleaning up the water on this planet. I didn't really know how I was going to do it. I just knew it had to be done. I thought, well, maybe I can find a way. And it's working. It's not, we, we haven't reached out as far as I would like to. But we're gaining on it, according to find out from the YouTube, our films have been seen in 142 countries, and I didn't spend any money getting there. It was all word of mouth. I just set a goal to do it, and I just didn't know I could. And see, I didn't have any background for this. I'm basically a construction farmer. But when I realized that every day we were using more water to flush toilets, wash cars, fill filling booths, and water lawns, and every day we got more and more people using the water, it's a trend that cannot continue indefinitely. Something has to change if humans are ever going to have decent water to drink. So I set a goal to help people have decent water to drink. I made a DVD on it. It's called Energized Water. It's available on my website at RaymondGrace.us. And uh, a lot of 
people have used it to clean up on them, and that's what I want them to do. And we made film, which I want is the print for freedom, which I made to stop abuse on women and kids. Uh, those have been our two main projects for our foundation work. Before the feedback, we got really good results on it. But then I realized that most people don't know anything about human trafficking, so they won't be interested. Or don't want to know. Well, you know, that's true. But what I learned was it was a third party illegal operation I was trying to do. And I got to thinking the same principle for the most part that contributes to human trafficking, contributes to schoolyard bullies, uh, harassment in the office, abuse in jails, nursing homes, hospitals, other places. So I just made a film that people can watch and apply that. Now, the folks watching it don't really have to understand. It. That's a good part. What we found out was that we could put an intent into a film and carry that intent and it would play, or not only it would play, but for the person watching it, she's used to direct it. Uh, I learned that on um, being on Coast to Coast Radio back in 04. George Norrie, the talk show host, mm -hmm. asked me a question that night. He said, if uh, folks listening out there, and so we've got five, ten million of them, if they were to put a container of water by the radio, can you change the energy of it? I said, I don't know. Let's try and find out. So during the station break, I went through my mental process of what I would do to clean up the most polluted water I could think of, because I figured there was somebody out there had something really bad. So when we came back on the air, about all I had to do was keep talking, and we took a uh, phone call. And the folks called in with the taste of that. They drank some of it, and some of their aches and pains went away. I've got a very good friend now who was listening that night. He was a truck driver, and he had a backache. He drank some of the water, and the pain went away. Well, we didn't know that was going to happen. Very thankful it did. So I got to thinking, if we can change the energy of water over radio waves, we can do the film. So we made a film to do that. And then I got to thinking, if we can change the energy of water, we can change the energy of in a house, an office, a school, uh, anywhere else. So then we made another film for that. And it's called Change Energy, Change Your Life. And we didn't really know when we started that we could put energy in a film that would carry that energy where it was played or directed. It found it was good. I love it. So in the past 15 years or so, what's happened? What's happened? Anything you want to catch me up on? Well, the whole goal here, in, a, in addition to teaching people how they can have decent water and stop an abuse, is to empower people. And I call it freedom. I had a motto when I was 10 years old, went something like this, there is no substitute for freedom. That's what we're about. I just see a need out here in the world, and I contribute to doing something to solve the problem. And you don't believe you can't. I don't. But even you know don't know for sure that you can That's either, true. right? I true. I don't know that we can. I don't know that we can either. Let me ask you if you've come up with any other questions. I remember you telling me you have two. Does it work? Is it useful? Yeah. Are there any more questions now? Have you added to no, that? No. Uh, that's. Uh, that's pretty much it. When I get new information, I ask two questions. First question, does it work? Second question, does it help? I never ask third questions, but it's use. What I found, Bob, is the people that continually ask questions, and they want detailed explanations on everything. And all the answers have to conform to what they were educated to believe. Well, I've learned something about these people. They don't ever accomplish anything. They just ask questions. If I'm asking you questions and I'm looking for answers that fit what I believe already, I'm lost right there. Yeah, because you're not going to get them. I'll block it with my beliefs, right? All right. Bob, I'm sure you, you've uh, also heard of this uh, illustration, too. According to the law of aerodynamics, bumblebee cannot fly. Right. You can just look at it. Very heavy body, short, stubby wings, yeah. and there's no way you can get off the ground. No. Bumblebee doesn't know that. Uh, nobody told me. You didn't go to school. I didn't need And then what I was told, I didn't believe.
So, having imagination. Now, look at the big picture. What if dowsing could actually not only detect poisons in the water, but clear them? And of course, our bodies are 80% water. So this dousing stuff isn't really anything to uh, poo-poo off and think it's a child's game, is it, Mr. Vic? Where, where, where is my friend? Are you, are you in an my, no, my apologies. I forgot to put my back, my microphone back on. Um, I think that's really interesting. It's fascinating, you know, because we know that as soul, we all have this ability, you know, and I think the illustrations that, uh, you know, Jesus in the Bible talks about, you know, raising the dead, turning the water into wine, you know, we know we can do that. But the question is, are you sufficiently evolved, you know, to, to actually do that? And I think that when you look at this type of uh, tool, uh, it does provide a way of giving you some benefits in that arena. More, more immediate benefits, but I think we, we all have that ability. It's just a question of how you want to focus on something. But dousing as a tool looks like a viable thing to do. You know, it's, uh, it's funny in business that a lot of people are still under the belief that something has to cost a lot of money to be good or effective. And with dousing, it's really very inexpensive to get started on the whole thing. So I want to talk about programming. And it's interesting how um, Webster's Dictionary defines it. A program is a plan or a system under which action may be taken towards a goal. I like that. So... We can apply that to more than dousing in our lives. Can you repeat that again? I didn't quite capture it. Absolutely. A program mm -hmm. is a plan or system under which action may be taken towards a goal. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. And so a key step to programming is done by establishing your dowsing system some mutually acceptable pre-established agreements and understandings about words phrases and conditions and what it is meant by different pendulum or dowsing tool movements so for example not everybody's yes would be a clockwise spin. So as you get to know your pendulum, say I always knew that my yes was a clockwise and slightly to the right, whereas my no mm -hmm. is coming back towards me. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's three simple steps. And to me, just like the definition, these steps would be like basic things we need to do in our life no matter what we're doing. So the first one is to obtain permission. Um, it's best to read the question out loud. So you would say, may I, can I, should I, establish, change, or add dowsing conditions and agreements or programs which will be continually in effect until changed by me. And if the pendulum swings to yes, they say you go to step B. So step B is to input or establish a program. So when the pendulum is still swinging yes, you read any developed program, change, or addition, and finish it by saying, end of program, thank you. And, uh, 
It's always nice to hear thank you as Miyuki reminds us every day, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And then um, the final check is to ask the dowsing system, are the conditions or changes acceptable as presented? Being clear and non-contradictory and open to change by my request. And if yes, you're finished. Now, if you get a no, you use your pendulum to ask questions and try to determine why. So when we're talking about may I, can I, should I, may I is to mean do I have appropriate permission to proceed and be involved? Can I means do I have the ability to successfully douse in this area and am I ready? And should I means considering all the aspects related to this situation, would it be appropriate, proper, and suitable to douse in this area? End of program. Thank you. It's pretty basic. Now, like say the primary program is to be continually in effect until I choose to make changes. Covering the overall primary controls, limits, agreements, and dousing responses. The purpose is to determine amounts, effects, conditions, circumstances, influences, times, measurements, distances, numbers, and percentages for other requested areas. So, for example, they use a vitamin C deficiency as an example of how you would find out how much the percentage off is. I mean, you can really get technical with it. They ask that you don't formulate questions that you would be emotional about because, of course, as we know, the placebo effect will suggest that up to 30% of our dows works through our subconscious or our intent or our muscle reflex. And um, I think that ties in beautifully too in our quest to define soul and spirit. Um, communications and support is to be inner cooperative and restricted to my super conscious spirit, my higher self, my awareness, mind systems, subconscious and related systems, and all other levels of my total being, and their approved spirit guides, guardian angels, helpers, and other chosen by me, or any of the above. Influences such as misleading thoughts, images, wishes, or any other conditions or methods by any source, physical or non-physical of any kind, are not to take control of any of my systems or affect me adversely or cause incorrect dowsing answers without my permission. Time, as related to dowsing, is to be in my perceived time unless otherwise requested. Answers are to be selected from all available knowledge and information sources. Okay. You have anything to say, Vic? Oh, it sounds like a very interesting technique. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people would derive a lot of benefit from it. So right. To share that. So, I know you guys have seen pendulums, but Joe made these dowsing rods very easily last night mm. down in the basement. And um, I can't think of the old school name for how they used to uh, hook gutters up. Mm -hmm. But that would be one of the names. And this is a copper fitting here. Now, if I step back, mm -hmm. those rods will do the right thing. But like if I do it right here, mm -hmm. it's totally in contact with all the EMFs coming off the computer. Okay. So let me just step back for a minute. All right. And this 
It takes a minute to practice, but of course, if it costs somebody nothing to make, you figure what's Let me got the not, right? So what I do is I put my elbows close to my waist mm -hmm. so I can gain balance standing straight. Mm -hmm. Now, if you point them a little too low, you see what happened. Mm -hmm. If you have them a little too high, you see what happened. Now, so, is that floating the, the rod that's coming out of the, the cylinder? Is that floating within the cylinder? That, yes, it is. Oh, okay. This piece of metal, uh -huh. Joe bend, and then he has a bend on it here. Oh, okay. Holds the topper on. Oh, beautiful. I see. Beautiful. Yeah. So I would suggest to people, you know, to not get tripped out and to find a comfortable place on their body where they can learn to balance these. And, you know, like Raymond says, now see, I just put that one down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But like what Raymond says, you don't want to look like a goofball outside walking around holding these things. Um, you want to learn to get balanced first. And then you have a little more confidence mm -hmm. when you're outside. But one of the reasons why I kind of dig this, too, mm -hmm. is because uh, when I was young, my dad was going to get rich selling metal detectors. You know, he bought into one of those deals. Right. right. And so there was a high school behind our home. And he would go out there with his metal detector and find high school class rings and coins and all sorts of stuff. But I just did want to show you what Joe made. And, of course, you've surely seen... My crystal pendulum. Yes. Right. I'm just showing you a few varieties. This one's pretty cool um, because what you can do is you can open it up and insert a stone. So the stone colors, of course, would be lined up with the chakras. And this would be intended to do energy balancing with. I'm sure you know what this is, being a man. A plumb bob? Oh, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Joe had this downstairs, and this would be the perfect type of pendulum, say, to work with outside because it's heavy enough that the wind wouldn't blow it all around. Mm. He wouldn't want to take a lightweight pendulum outside to do any dousing work. That's where the uh, different things like this would come in or something that's weighted. Mm -hmm. Now what you're doing, uh, like people that use dowsing uh, rods uh, for uh, finding, let's say, water so they know where to sink a well. Correct. Uh, the, the way I see the process is you focus on what it is you're looking for and then you allow the rods to interact with your electromagnetic field that's sensitive to your, your thoughts, let's say. And depending on how it behaves, then we'll give you the response that you're looking for. Here's what was really cool about that. Okay, so in another video, Raymond, Raymond is teaching the interviewer he was like a cable host back in the early 90s. He was showing her how to douse. And so they were outside of this national park, and they were uh, in the area where the kids' playground was. And he was showing her how to find the stream underwater. So, for example, when you're doing something like that, you would usually have a partner because say her rods crossed when she was standing over the water mm -hmm. but also he was out there on the perimeter and would walk in 
And so where they met, he was able to then work with his dowsers and say, zero to five feet, five to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20. And if they would cross when it was at the right number, so it's very specific. And then I watched another um, video that a guy did that was an incredible dowser. And um, he was talking about, say, he wanted to know how far down on a variety of levels. So when he hired a driller and he paid him to run all the way down to the bottom, he hit all of those water sources as well. Yeah. But you know what else is cool about this stuff is, say, checking out, like, the noxious um, energies that are in your area or to know where to build because, say, for example, these days people don't care. So if they build haphazardly and they're half on uh, clay and half on, you know, whatever other kind of formation there is. That's why, you know, certain parts wash away and the house caves in. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of... Uh, what, what What's going through, let's say I'm, a, I'm dousing right now. Okay. And, uh, and I want to find... Uh, the well water source at 20 feet. So do I just simply put that in my mind, in my visual, uh, you know, the way I imagine, for example, uh, within the ground, visualize uh, what, a, what it is I'm looking for, and then the dowser, uh, the instrument, the, the rods would then pass over when I wanted to, or... You know, what exactly is going through the mind of a dowser? This is what I'm asking. Okay, okay. Neutral. Mm. Non, Non-judgmental. Mm. Uh, clear and calm. Right. Right. That makes sense. Right. And surely, as we know, manifestation happens many different ways. But especially when the word is spoken, it adds to mm -hmm. the potency right. of creation. So Yeah, because now you're basically grounding the thought. And it, by using the spoken word, it actually grounds it to the physical. You know what I mean? I do. I do. And of course, when I was young, mm -hmm. uh then people would read my energy. They would always say, now you need to be grounded. You need to be grounded. And, you know, sometimes I thought, well, am I not? Because to me, surviving everything I had survived and growing and coming forward all the time, I mean, I thought I was grounded. But I can remember when I was... Uh, involved in the Course of Miracles when I was 21 years old running with the psychic. Um, that's when I was really hearing a lot of that. So I, I was pretty young on the journey. I wanted to add in thoughts from Steiner and he wasn't referring to dowsing. But the words to me are bridge builders. So I'm going to jump back into that. It says, anyone who attains to visions of the higher worlds bears images within him of his own inner life and is at first guided by what is in those images. Understanding to see me is in no way influenced by it nor does it exercise any influence over it. Previous understanding need not in the least affect what brings man to a vision of what is completely unprejudiced and in accordance to truth. On the contrary, 
previous understanding and grasping of these things with all rounded powers of judgment prepare the heart and soul to enter into the appropriate way into the power of vision. Want to see something cool? Kind of cool, isn't it? This thing makes me like watching my car. Real way into the power of vision. Vic, every time Steiner talks about judgment, I want to rewrite his words and change it to discernment. But I don't know that that's, I don't know that that's what I'm supposed to do. I, I think I'm supposed to keep trying to relate to people that the, these modern words coming from this man are over a century old. So I wanted to bring that up because I don't think any of us should be judging, but I think that many people are coming into learning about discernment. It's, how do you define discernment? Well, discernment doesn't have prejudice. It works from the heart brain, and you kind of let yourself be like a human dowser or something. And um, if it doesn't feel right inside of you, then you're not judging it. You're just saying, I'm not into it, man. I got to go the other way. Hmm. What, do you think? what do you think? Well, I'm over here. Uh, basically, what there's, I just looked it up because I, uh -huh. I, wasn't, I wasn't clear on what a good definition would be. But it, according to the... Uh, the system that says that it's the it's a noun it's a, the ability to judge well and it's an astonishing lack of discernment so so to discern is to judge and to judge well according maybe it's to judge with wisdom which yeah, yeah. takes it back to more of a feeling than mm -hmm. fear mm -hmm. instead of a thought that's here yeah you know, it, it's, you know, it's semantics, I'm afraid to say, but it's, I understand what you're saying, and it's, uh, it's important to understand the differences between certain things, you know, like discernment and other things, judgmental, but it, it comes down to, you know, a, uh, being able to judge well. And that comes down to a strong moral and ethical constitution. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna bring this up to the screen. <clears throat> this is how intricate the dowsing wheel is mm -hmm. included in the letters to Robin. I see. Yeah, and you know what I think is interesting about this? And here again, I am just a girl and I did not go to college and I do not have a technical background, but you know, my buddy Crichton Miller, the uh, Celtic cross guy that holds the two patents on the work working Celtic cross. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a protractor is usually 360 degrees, right? 180, isn't it? Well, the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Well, it's part of a circle. Right. Okay. So, one of the clues that, you know, he gives is that, of course, there's more than 360. And here again, it's over my head. I don't, I don't have the words, Vic. Okay. But on the dowsing wheel, mm -hmm. it also has those extra... 30, well, yeah, like, it goes to 390 mm. instead of 360, okay. but it's all fitting into the circle. Now, maybe this is one of the mysteries. I mean, I don't know. I just, I just bring things to the table and <laughs> put them down, you know? Interesting. Okay, so this piece of paper I'm going to hold up would be <clears throat> over 
a <clears throat> hundred interesting areas to explore on yourself. So some of those would be, so now we're talking about dousing for your health. Meridians, aura, color balance, energies, noxious energies, vitamins, minerals, body balance, mind, emotional, attitude, images, patterns, nervous system, clashing, zapping, that would be of your energies, uh, past lives, spiritual entities, other influences, shielding, ions and electrites, amino acids, acid alkali balance, that's the one I'm going to start practicing with. All right, all right. I just picked out mine. Um, toxins, infections, allergies, systems, organs, pain, pressure, and others. Now, when you asked me when we did the first show what I thought my level was of dousing, mm -hmm. Mama hasn't done none of this. Mm -hmm. She's waiting for some friends or something. <laughs> well, that's not such a bad idea either. You know, it's how you learn. It really is because, I mean, if you think about all the things that already are so interesting that they are a part of daily life, and then you think, well, how do I put something like this in? I just don't have the time. See, I'm guilty of that. But if I really wanted to make an impact in the world and in my community, it seems like this would be a really good way to go. Well, I think the best impact we all can make is just learn to live in a compassionate, heart-centered life. And, uh, you know, if this is something that you feel can augment that, then by all means. Right. <clears throat> so. We have 28 minutes and we have a 21 minute video. So I want to read you a couple more passages from Steiner. Okay. And then we're going to just roll into another really cool dousing video. Okay. So I wrote down that to me, this passage feels like why dousing works. It says, the etheric body is in a perpetual flow of thought, but it only becomes perception when the brain and the physical body reflects what is going on in the etheric body. This etheric body is there all the time, but a man ordinarily knows nothing of it. So, our etheric body is inside us where I always would used to get that confused with the astral body which is outside of us and that etheric body I'm going to have to say is that direct connection to spirit that we've all been graced to have and that we're trying to figure out what it is interesting yeah and then the last thing. The etheric, as far as I remember, it, and again, my prior path, uh, the etheric uh, is the unconscious component within the mind itself overall. In other words, we have an etheric body that uh, is between the astral and the mental, the pure mental realms. Anyway, just something to think about. It's, it, but it's part of the unconscious component of the mind yes I, I, I agree and once you get beyond the etheric supposedly you get into the first expression of soul right? that you're now on the soul plane and uh, that, that's an interesting uh, way of looking at it and at that point you have your light body as well yeah well you're collecting all your, your lower bodies uh, right body. right and, and you know what? We'll still know each other. We've always known each other. Exactly. We'll never change. Exactly. But <laughs> here again, I think that's another terrifying aspect for people. Okay. 
So one last thing, such as the ascent from life in the senses to spiritual life, whereas man can ordinarily only perceive what is going on in his instrument of reflection, what as a reflection he sees in his brain by means of initiation, he comes to direct experience and perception in his etheric body. Mm -hmm. Then on reacting, this inner experience and perception, he comes into touch with quite another world, that of essential being. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. That sounds good. I like it. I just really enjoy this experience, Vic, and I, and I appreciate you so much because I know there's a few other people out there that are doing this kind of work that we're doing, but, you know, <laughs> I don't love you for being a pioneer, man. Uh, that's, that's... All right, so we've got this video, and... It's on a channel that y'all can find called Blueprint for Love. And the name of the video is The Overview and History of Dowsing, a Must-See Prerequisite. So please, everyone, forgive me for putting it as the big finale, but it just felt right. So roll that video, big. Hello everyone and welcome to our Dowsing Academy. My name is Chaze and I'm your host today. Before I get started, I just want to cover a couple of housekeeping items. The number of callers make it almost impossible to have open lines. It would simply be too distracting, so I have you all muted. If you have questions about today's class, I will provide you with a link at the end of the call where you can go into our Dowsing Forum and ask any additional questions as they relate to today's call. You do not need to take any notes if you don't want to. You can listen to the recording after the call. I will email it to you, provided you're registered for today's class. You're going to get that just fine. So here is our agenda for today. People always want to learn right away how to doubt and be 100% accurate when asking yes or no questions. The biggest complaint I get from students is, it doesn't work. Why is it not working for me, but it's working for him? Because there is so much more you can do with dowsing, I have created this prerequisite class to not only give you an overview of what dowsing is, I will also give you some of the history of where dowsing comes from and what it has been used for in the past. And lastly, I will share with you some great ways that dowsing can be used for. So as you're getting through this class, this call today, you're going to know that there's so much more than just asking yes and no questions. I have been dowsing for over 30 years. And my dowsing specialty, simply put, has to do with balance. To rebalance what is out of balance, while dowsing can also help you locate lost items and so much more, my interest lies in bringing balance to another human being, the situation, or the planet, so that healing can take place on several layers. When a person is sick or cannot concentrate or is easily distracted or has too many non-beneficial friends in their life or perhaps the finances are not what you wish them to be, it's usually because there is a serious imbalance somewhere. You might wonder if we can even douse for that, and the answer is a great yes. We indeed can douse for a more balanced financial status. Every illness and discomfort of our physical and emotional and mental body temples, when not in harmony through balance, will create unconscious and emotional blocks. Using dowsing to clear those emotional blocks can bring order and harmony and bring ourselves back into alignment with the universe and those sharing with us. Balance is my passion. 
helping you understand and bring balance into your life is my purpose. And as you get through these classes and as you're listening to today's call alone, you're going to realize that there's so much more than just getting a yes or a no. And as you let this integrate into your system, your yes and your no becomes more accurate as you practice and as you start to understand what this really does. I'm excited you're here today. So dowsing has been called many things. For me personally, it is simply the easiest, quickest, and most accurate way to get useful and important information that may otherwise not be accessible to me. Dowsing, whether with tools or without tools, is to measure and understand our energetic universe. The most common and best known use for dowsing is probably for location of water. There are countless other ways to use dowsing. Your imagination and the ability to ask the right question offers unlimited uses for dowsing applications. Dowsing is simply a technique to measure and alter energetic frequencies and vibrations of our unseen universe. Dowsing can be performed using tangible tools such as a pendulum or other tools like a bobber or an L rod or Y rod. And we can also use our own body to get a very accurate reading about any question as you will learn in our deviceless dowsing class. Even kinesiology, muscle testing, is a form of dowsing as it is to measures unseen energy. We dedicate an entire class exclusively about how to use muscle testing as a form of dowsing. So yes, we teach you how to use just your hands and even your eyes, for example, or your upper body, and get answers to any questions you may have. You can use dowsing and muscle testing techniques even when standing in line at a grocery store and no one would even know that you're dowsing. It comes in really handy during situations when you just can't whip out your pendulum because people might look at you a little bit funny. You can also use your intuitive mind, your third eye, our knowing center, and your non, other non-physical senses like clairsentience, clairaudience, clairvoyance, claircognizance, for example, to perform your dowsing services. That's what psychics are doing. The real authentic psychics, okay? What they're doing is they're tuning into those senses and they're really picking up on energetic frequencies. Now, it's going to take a little while for some of you to get to that place. And a really great way to get to that place and practice your intuition is to go do it with dowsing using a pendulum. By now, you know that everything is created by energy. Energy then is a form of vibration. Electricity is a more concentrated version of energy with the power to destroy. Dowsing is a much gentler version of energy, but still has the ability to shift and alter energy. All energy can be measured by most means of technology. For example, the subtle energies that are given off by your brain and your higher self, however, cannot be measured by technology readily available. We have this complex machine called the lie detector, which can only measure yes or no answers, but no more. Dowsing, however, is not only your most accurate lie detector, it can give you so much more information about the actual situation. It can give you accurate answers down to the tiniest levels that you ask it for, because dowsing measures wavelengths. Simply put, what happens when you ask a question while holding your pendulum? The question generates an electrical impulse, which is being sent to your brain and your heart, and your heart and your brain already knowing everything there is to know about your past, your present, and your future, will answer and send the answer back by means of tiny, tiny microconstrictions of your muscles. Your muscles and tissues will send the electric signal throughout your body, which of course includes your arm and your hand holding the pendulum, down through the chain until the pendulum reveals what you in reality already know. That's why as you go through our classes, you will get to a place where you can put the pendulum down and douse for answers using your own body or your own hands or your eyes. 
And after a while of doing deviceless dowsing with just your body, you won't even need your body parts anymore to do dowsing. You simply use your senses. This is what's called claircognizance, clairvoyance, and so on. These intuitive developments are just more refined ways of dowsing energy. So before I continue on giving you reasons why dowsing works so amazingly accurate, let me give you a little history of where dowsing comes from. In many parts of Europe, dowsing is called radiesthesia, or also called radiesthesia. This term comes from the Latin word radius, which means ray, and the Greek word esthesis, which means sensitivity. Radiesthesia then means to have a sensitivity to various kinds of radiations and vibrations and to have the ability to search for energetic variations. It has been said amongst dowsers that in the 70s, or in the 70s, just about 75% of the population had the ability to be sensitive enough to become a successful dowser. Today, apparently, over 90% of the population has this ability. So rest assured that you most likely belong to the 90% of the population and that you clearly have the ability to become a successful dowser. You may ask yourself why the jump in number, and the simple answer is that the Earth has undergone tremendous energetic changes in the last 20 to 30 years. Some people call this the veil is thinning. Humanity is undergoing a spiritual awakening, always has, and the energetic shifts on our planet and the universe at large are helping to expand our consciousness. When I researched the history of dowsing, I found various information. For example, one source revealed that dowsing has been illustrated in cave drawings estimated to be more than 8,000 years old. Other sources say that dowsing has been practiced as far back as 4,000 years BC. In these olden days, dowsers were called geomancers. At that time, ancient cultures such as the Egyptians, the Chinese, and Hebrews would use dowsing to find the best location for their houses. Other uses included to heal a sick body and soul or to help in important decision-making process. Dowsing books in print date back to the 16th century, and since then, dowsing has been flourishing as a means to locate water or to locate buried treasure or to find minerals. Most of today's science about dowsing came from several dedicated European physicists and Egyptologists of that time. These people's work on vibrations and frequencies and colors have proven that by using a simple tool, such as a pendulum, can achieve enormous effects. Substantial work was spent on remote dowsing, also known as teleradiostasia. New tools for increased accuracy were constantly being created. As time went on, people in Europe using dowsing expanded to using dowsing not only for environmental issues, but also for medical issues. So today, we don't only measure someone's state of health, but we can also find treatments without the use of dowsing, or with the use of dowsing, without the use of dowsing tools. When you look at kinesiology and muscle testing, even currently in photography supports and verifies the fact that today's pendulums can possess healing ability. Today, a more common name for energy means, measuring energy means, kinesiology, also known as muscle testing. It's in essence the exact same thing as dowsing, only measured with your muscles directly rather than using a tool. Today, you can use dowsing for your own personal use or your healing practice. Dowsers are also hired by large corporations and oil and pharmaceutical companies, as well as the government. Military use uh, for dowsing may have started to find water supply, but it soon extended to detecting unexploded shells after World War I. Finding position of sea mines and to detect enemy tunnels in Vietnam in 1967. And in 1959, Bern Cameron demonstrated his dowsing abilities and located all submarines in the Pacific Ocean and even determined which ones were U.S., Russian, or belonged to other countries. Quite amazing, all with a simple pendulum. 
sadly, many students searching for just the right developing class can't find the information they're looking for. They don't even know that this is the information they're looking for because deep down everyone knows is looking for more than just to ask simple questions like yes or no. Spirituality and metaphysics need to include at minimum an overview of shapes and their intense vibrations and influence on life everywhere. We may be spiritual beings having an earthly experience, but with that comes a chemical experience as well. So when we teach our classes, we don't just teach you how to hold a pendulum and how to ask the questions in the right way. This would have best result in the student feeling like he or she is, is in for a guessing game. And the greatest benefit to our students' experience is an increase, an increased sense of clear cognizance, leaving the students knowing 100% that he got the right answer. There is a sense of oneness with oneself, which many students do not have before taking the class, and in turn, it creates a self-confidence that leaves people leaving more alert, more in tune, and intuitive, overall and mostly, a lot more balanced. Real dowsing has nothing in common with prayer, faith, and is certainly not a guessing game. Real dowsing is based on science, deeply spiritual, allowing for the participant to get precise answers to any question they may have whether tangible or intangible. In our classes, you learn how to use the pendulum beyond just asking for yes or no questions. You will learn how to change energy. And when you learn how to use a pendulum in the right way, you actually can make a correction in the energetic field and so change its state. The end result is a changed environment. So you can bring back into harmonious balance what is out of balance. Our students, instead of asking if it's beneficial to attend the family dinner because history may have shown tension in the past, they will use the pendulum to alter the energy by removing any negative energy surrounding the situation and then adding beneficial energy to bring about a positive time when attending the family dinner. And instead of asking whether or not you should get divorced, our students will open their thinking to a whole other place where first they will remove any non-beneficial energies and then filling the void with positive energies that may now support the marriage to stay intact. And if not, you can even use the pendulum to create an energetic environment that is beneficial for everyone involved while going through a breakup. So you see, my goal of teaching you balance is to help you take 100% responsibility by giving you the tools to alter energy for the benefit of all involved, not just to ask yes or no questions. Here are some of uh, additional ways that you can use dowsing, that we use dowsing, that I use dowsing for. You can uh, check into previous lifetimes. You can look at curses and vows of poverty, you can, which is a very big one, by the way. You can look into hiring employees, whether or not you should or should not. Uh, you can discover dishonest employees. You can uh, use it for locating the right home to buy. You can use it to discover hidden damages to a property that maybe even the seller doesn't know yet. You can use it to buy electronics and vehicles and so on. You can use it to remove emotional trauma, to transmute non-beneficial energies into beneficial ones. You can use it to assess your health and diet, to clear your environment of non-beneficial energies from the past or the present and including the future. You can use it to check compatibility with people, potential partners, including employers or employees. You can use it to find lost objects. You can use it to get help on narrowing down your true purpose in life, for example. You can use it to ask questions about your clients on how to help them best and how to improve your business or website, how to generate more income, how to generate more blood flow to your brain, or even uh, if somebody is suicidal. The human experience of the human body consists of one internal feminine and one internal masculine part as well as one external feminine and one external masculine part. Our classes are appropriately divided into one of each of these quadrants. The end result is a fabulously balanced new you, 
and you will know exactly how to ask the questions. And depending on the answers, you will know how to fix the energetic balance with your pendulum, which we will teach you also. Our topics cover all sections of the quadrants. You will um, look at aspects, whether they're financial, physical, mental, spiritual. We will look at purpose and wealth, health and well-being, confidence and self-esteem. We will look at spirituality and enlightenment. Yes, you can achieve all of that with a simple tools such as the pendulum. And I will teach you how. So some of our... Um, Upcoming classes have to do with how to do a body scan with dowsing or how to heal a person uh, with dowsing. We also have a class on what to ask exactly and how to formulate your questions because your dowsing answers are only as good as the questions you ask. We will talk about what kind of dowsing tools to use, what they're used for, how to, we have a very special class, which I love very much, which is how to douse your way to your goals at record speed. There's nothing more frustrating than having a plate full with things you need to do. And in the end, you feel stressed and you haven't given attention to any of the things you need to accomplish. This class will teach you how to give 100% to each of your goals and to get it done at record speed. Love this class. We also teach you how to douse without a pendulum, use your body, use your hands, your eyes, how to make contact with your spirit guides, how to douse for increased uh, psychic abilities, how to make contact with loved ones using dowsing, how to send telepathic messages using dowsing, how to create an energetic field that will attract abundance and wealth to you, and so much more. The first class you'll take with us will be to first program your pendulum so that you know with 100% that your communication lines to your pendulum are open and accurate. With each class, you will also get a new exercise to practice, which will overall shift your body and mental state of mind into a more harmonious state. Of course, you will learn how to ask for more, the four most asked questions, and we will program your body and pendulum to always give you the accurate answers. All of our classes are recorded, and you can listen to them at your own convenience. To gain access to each classroom where you'll find the necessary charts and downloads needed for each class. I am getting to the end of my program here today. If you are listening to this live, then you can expect an email from me with the link on where to get more information about our next class and our overall class schedule. If you listen to this as a recording or even a video, and you would like more information, simply visit corefreedom.com and click on the forum and then locate the link to our dowsing forum. I welcome your questions and comments and look forward to accompanying you here at Balanced Dowsing Academy. Blessings with you and bye everyone. So thank you, Bob everything that we've learned today and think about the probabilities of just incorporating one aspect of dowsing to confirm your spirit and to let you know that whatever phenomena you're going through that it's real and is in progress and time is of the essence so with all that being said, I do hope you enjoyed today's program on Sophia's Emporium. And I once again want to extend all the six hard virtues to Vic for putting up with me and going on this journey with me. And, um, you know, for letting me be me because, uh, not too many people in this world have ever said, hey, Suze, I accept you, and you go ahead and be you, man. So thanks, Vic. You're very welcome, my dear. It's been a lot of fun, and I, I enjoy your individual individualism, and uh, I respect that deeply because uh, there's too many clones out there for my taste. Thank you. And, and uh, it's, it's actually ridiculous, some of this stuff. But, hey, uh, you know, my hat's off to you. Keep up fighting. You know, you're gonna you're gonna stumble. You're gonna fall. You're gonna get up, and you're gonna keep going. And that's just gonna make you a much much better person in the end. 
you know, it's a good thing that I know how to work with homeopathy because you just melt these tissue salts with some water, man, and you put it on your scrape or your wound, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it's better. But before we close out today, um, there was one more thing I wanted to connect. So if you guys check out Raymond Grace, um, he made an incredible, well, actually Walt did, Walt Woods did, this incredible Flower of Life Mandela. Mm -hmm. And you can't really get a hold of them. They're not making them. It's way too extensive. But Joe might be able to make them. So in the meantime, I did want to show you guys my cool pants from Concha. All right. Let's stop that share. So pretty exciting show. Um, not much more I can say. If you find this interesting, just come on over to Seuss Pratt on YouTube and subscribe there, and you'll find a plethora of interesting videos. So with that, peace, love, and light from the big yellow house on the third cosmic ray in Seuss world. Bye-bye.